creating Studio Ghibli anime inspired grass is possible in C4D. I'm not sure it's the best tool for it, but it is possible and I have it and it is available to download on Patreon uh, for the $5 tiers, uh, which I've also there's a bunch of other projects on there that are available for download once you get access to that tier. So take advantage of that. And I don't know how long it'll still be $5 because they're starting to get a lot of cool stuff on there and there's more stuff coming still. Okay, uh, but yeah, we'll do a little breakdown, a walkthrough of how I created this a little scene. But it's just nice and relaxing, and I really enjoyed working on it. Um, but I would say right off the gate, if this is your style that you want to go for, I don't know that Cinema 4D is the tool for the job. I think there are other programs like Unreal Engine and Blender that have more things built in uh, for this kind of style of stuff that just work better uh, than this. But yeah, let's go ahead and dive in and break it down. And thanks again ahead of time for... The Patreon memberships, I uh, appreciate that. They help me keep making content. It means a lot. Thank you. <laughs> this is my windy grass scene um, that I think a lot, of, a lot of people asked about. I teased it a lot. I worked on it for forever. And I added these like cool wisp and this nice flowing grass. And it has this cool anime style. And the cool thing about it is that it's not Toon Shader at all. Uh, it's not at all. It's just normal redshift. Uh, no tune shader. It's actually uh, what I'll do is I'll break down the material because it's incredibly simple. It is an AO node piped into a ramp to make it almost entirely white. Uh, and, then, and then that goes into the overall tint, which is just giving it this kind of glow. And then we have a max on noise, which is very faint. And that goes into a ramp, which is from dark green to light green, like kind of the three colors that you want in your scene of your grass. And that's set to vertical. And that is plugged into both the emissive color and the base color. Now, when it comes to the base color, there's also a little bit of metalness in it. Reflection roughness, pretty mid. And then there's a little bit of coat on it as well. And it's a redshift standard material. And that gives it that little bit of shine back on top that gives it like the little highlights when the light hits the corners because you don't get that when you do it uh, the other way. And then on top of that, we have the emissive is just beneath one. So we still get some of the application of the shadows and lighting and stuff on it uh, on top of that. So it's kind of this weird in between of being emissive but also wanting to catch shadows and things and also wanting to catch highlights so it's just this balancing act of all of these settings and things and then those uh, are all just hairs and the way it's layered is basically that it's layered there are some groups of clumps of hair that are bigger and here together and then there's like the small hair that goes across the entire thing and then there is wind that goes across everything and then there's just some normal rocks here as well which is easy the back plate is just that it's a studio it's just like a cartoon cloud back plate i think i made it with ai for the background i'm not sure i might have i think i think there's i don't remember where i made it this has been a while ago um but yeah so the grass is broken up with big clumps short filler clumps small clumps flowers for the pink and the blue flowers and that's it. So those are kind of on the ground and the others. And then I added uh, some turbulence and flock to drive both and wind. Sorry, let's stick on the grass for a second. Wind and turbulence to drive the grass. And then there's also the same thing, which is the particles, which is the like leaves floating around as well as these wisps going through here. So these are an emitter with a tracer on them, I do believe. Yeah, so these are basic emitters with a tracer on them. And the redshift tag, I believe, goes up in the middle and down. Yep, so that creates kind of that soft, uh, where it's like thin and then it gets fat and then it gets thin again. It's really nice, like soft wisp. This is drawing, you know, and it's just kind of this crazy balance of in between. And I wanted to do a deep dive into it, but honestly, I just, it's so, 
it's so much to do in one tutorial that I don't I don't know if you, if you guys want that or not. Um, let me know, but I am going to give you the project files to this. And uh, so you have it. I tried using uh, Redshift Tune and I didn't like the results I was getting. I actually liked the results I was getting better here. And the secret is really the AO, which is odd because that just kind of helps separate the grass. Like it doesn't like if you have the emission too high when you don't have the AO, all the grass kind of blends together and you just kind of see the color differences a little bit and you don't get these little pockets where it's like you see the little shadow right there and the shadow like just it, the sense of depth that the AO creates is just key for this, especially when you're relying so much on just forcing shadows to generate uh, between the two. And I think it just, and that combined with the ramp, just makes it look very nice. So like overall, the, you know, the effects are very simple. It's just layering them in over and over and over again uh, with some variety and stuff. And that's it. So that's the cool part. The cool part, I think my favorite thing about it is that it's not like, it's not set up in a way that's like, oh, it looks good from this angle. Like when you draw stuff, you know, uh, it's, it's 3D. So if I grab a new camera, right, and I want to, whoops, if I grab a new camera and I want to look at it from here, it still looks good. We're getting a lot more of that reflection that way. But I can come around here, and it's it's a real 3D grass scene, and that AO helps break that up. Pretty cool. But yeah. But, I mean, it's obviously, I don't think it's the best way to do this. I think if I was going to do it again, I would probably just create um, little flakes and assets and bake them and then scatter them with like a matrix scatter so they wouldn't really react with, with the wind and stuff but they'd be like baked animation and then that way you could actually do this across like a huge area if you wanted to and it would look really pretty because right now it's kind of set in there so you could just convert this to splines or alembics or something like that if and you can uh you know unclump them down or just have them be the whole patch and make it and then make small little sections and then take those little sections and then scatter those. Uh, that's kind of what I would do. But I wanted to see if I could do a really dynamic looking grass scene. But it's again hair. We got how many? One, two, three, four, five hairs. That's a lot for C4D. Um, it's just not gonna be super fast and stuff, but it's it's not bad, but it does look cool. But yeah, again, the main thing takeaway is like, yeah, it can be done. I wanted to see if it could be done. Um, if this is like the art style and stuff you're going for, I don't think C4D is the tool for you. I think there are better things that have more tools for that, like Blender and Unreal Engine. But yeah, that's my, that's my take. But yeah, this is available to download. Hopefully you guys like this kind of breakdown. It's just kind of walking through it. Um, let me know what you guys want in the comments below. Um, and yeah. And if you like it or have any questions about the, the actual download or anything, let me know. See you.